welcome to this week's episode of JA Top 5. Today we'll be going into the top 5 conspiracy theories surrounding the COVID-19 aka coronavirus. Number 5. The coronavirus was created by humans in a laboratory. It claims that the virus was made in China inside the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It accuses Beijing of creating the coronavirus and calls the disease an effective, I'm quoting this, an effective and catastrophic biological warfare weapon to kill mass populations. Here is what the lawsuit says, I'm quoting again. COVID-19 was designed by China to be a very effective biological warfare weapon to kill Number 4 The coronavirus was released as a way to control the growth of the world population. More than 11,000 scientists signed a petition calling for population control as a means of combating climate change. That's this week's Speak Out segment. In an article published Tuesday in the journal Bioscience, the scientists wrote that planet Earth is, quote, facing a climate emergency. They argued that population control was a necessary response to this emergency, writing, quote, the world population must be stabilized and ideally gradually reduced. Number three. The coronavirus was created by pharmaceutical companies and other beneficiaries of the drug industry to make a quick buck. Global coronavirus cases now in the range of 10,000. Meg Terrell joins us as pharmaceutical companies race for a cure. Meg. Hey, John. Well, work is underway at a number of pharmaceutical companies, while some are screening existing antiviral drugs to see if they work against the novel coronavirus. Other companies are working to develop entirely new drugs. Veer Biotechnology is one of those companies. They have a library of antibodies derived from the blood of survivors of SARS, which is in the same coronavirus family. Those people's immune cells created antibodies to that virus, and Veer has sorted through to find the strongest candidates to help treat disease. They're now screening those antibodies to see whether they might work against this novel virus. They're also looking for antibodies that may target this coronavirus more specifically. And over at Regeneron, whose labs we visited yesterday, they're taking a similar approach, only they have a technology that allows them to use mice with human immune systems to create antibodies. And that sounds crazy, but they've actually genetically engineered mice to replace their mouse immune systems with human ones. They're then able to expose the mice to proteins from the novel coronavirus and select the best antibodies they create in response. Essentially, since these are essentially microhumans, you now essentially infect them with the virus. Number two. The coronavirus was created to eradicate the senior citizens of the world. Putting this another way, since 1900, the global average life expectancy has doubled to around 70 years. Some are determined not to let old age slow them down. CCTV's Hendrik Sabrandi has insight from the U.S. state of Colorado. In his home office in Boulder, Colorado, Bill Zink... I'm in my 80s. I do not consider myself to be a gerontological wonder. ...is going strong at age 88. I enjoy being productively engaged and feeling that I'm adding a little bit of value. Four miles up the road, Della Van Heist is also fully engaged. She's 76. I've had two retirement parties. And they were so good, everybody says, when's the next? There are two of the countless number of people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s who've stayed mentally and physically active well past the point when most folks once did retire. According to the World Health Organization, the number of people over age 60 will almost double in the next 35 years to 22% of the world's population. By 2050, 2 billion people will fall in that category. And more and more seniors, if that's the right word, now live like they're half their age. They're in pools, on the dance floor, even on stage. It's not a completely new trend. Number one. Coronavirus originated from bats and was passed to humans by bats. It's very likely that this virus has come from bats. Bats have lots of viruses. Very few of these viruses actually make them sick. Bats are not a villain. Coronaviruses are a type of virus that can spread from animals to humans and cause diseases like SARS and MERS. 
The latest coronavirus outbreak started in Wuhan, China. So far, it's killed almost 1,400 people and infected more than 60,000 around the world. Scientists are racing to figure out how humans contracted the new virus. Based on initial genetic testing and past outbreaks, they say it's likely the coronavirus originated in bats. There was a recent paper put out where they looked at the sequence of a virus. They found that the closest relative to the Wuhan virus was a virus from a bat, 96% similar. I think that is pretty accepted that the viruses are very likely coming from bats, but how they're getting to us from bats, either directly or through some intermediate host, needs to be worked out though for this new one. There isn't one particular kind or species of bats that's associated with spillovers. For Nipah and Hendra, it's the big fruit bats. For SARS, and MERS, and this one, it's smaller insect-eating bats. Other animals have passed viruses between bats and humans before. SARS really spread from civet cats into humans. But now we know that the virus, some point in time, jumped from bats into civet cats. With MERS, what we think happened there is that a coronavirus jumped from bats into dromedary camels. And uh, recently, we're seeing this virus jumping from dromedary camels into the human population. Now, Chinese scientists say pangolins could be the middlemen, but their research hasn't been made public yet. Pangolins are the most trafficked animal in the world. They're basically like an armadillo with plates. So they've got these really long scales, and those scales are prized in traditional Chinese medicine. I think the isolation of this virus from pangolins is going to cause a lot of stir because there is going to be kind of a knee-jerk reaction to say, you know, pangolins are probably it. The more that people look at some of the genetic data, you'll get a little bit of infighting in the scientific community as to really whether or not the pangolin virus is the true direct link or if it's just maybe another piece of the puzzle. I think we should be really cautious until we see the paper that comes out. Scientists don't need to know where the virus came from in order to develop a vaccine. But identifying the origin can help contain the current outbreak and prevent future ones.